Hello, everyone. I'm not sure. A lot of people are away. I've chosen for today as a topic is the glass half empty or half full. One of the things that all of you agree on is that the program works. There is no question that if you work the food part of the program with the acupressure beads, you will lose only fat, it's healthy, and we promise 15 pounds only fat. The question then is, is the glass half empty, half full? And the reason I chose this topic is what's been happening the last few weeks conversationally amongst patients and emails that I've gotten. Some of you are going to turn me off in a few moments because I'm going to rehash some things to make sure you fully understand what's happening. I will get to my point after I do this rehash because I think it's critically important that you understand what's really going on. I've said to you time and time again, all disease in the body comes from some time, an imbalance. Obesity is part of that imbalance. Accuate works, but let's understand why, because if you understand, you'll also have a step up to not only lose the weight, to, but to make sure that you will be able to keep it off into the distant future. We've been dealing with a tremendous amount of guilt. So if it's not your fault, let's start over. On this program, the key is this gland in your brain named the hypothalamus. It controls satisfaction. When you massage the beads, they send a message to your hypothalamus and two things become important. Number one, it tells the hypothalamus that you're full and you stop eating. Number two, it blocks the hypothalamus ability to register calories. And between the milk, fruits, and vegetables, you have a program that is not only detoxifying, but that of a 10 month old. And so it is simulating the greatest period of growth that humans have. Now here is the key that you must focus on 
And if you let it go, you get confused. And what happens, other issues arise very quickly. A baby is not viable until about the seventh month. And then if it's born at the seventh month, it will survive. So we can infer there is, since it will survive, there is a sensing mechanism. And that mechanism senses that it's fully taken care of. It does nothing for itself. The mother goes to the hospital, the baby hangs out for another two months to get bigger and stronger. Out pops the baby and it goes from 100% being taken care of to zero. Now, I said there is some sensing mechanism. I'm going to infer that it recognizes it now has to totally take care of itself. I am suggesting it's traumatic. So the baby is born in trauma and it has available to it one mechanism only to help it with that survival and that is the baby is born with a scream. That screaming causes adults to pay attention and that's critical for the baby's survival. The mother is exhausted. She needs to take a nap. They wash, they wrap the baby, they take it away. And a few hours later, they bring the baby back and the mother feeds it. Food and comfort and trauma are the initial issues involved. Now, that trauma is comforted by food. And the power of that food will never diminish. So understand, you can't live without food and food is incredibly powerful because it comforts you. And here you are saying, I want to lose weight. Now, you don't need to justify that. You have every right to say, I want to lose weight. But we have a problem. The problem is that the psychological issues that come with food and comfort will never diminish because of the fact, and you know it to be true, you can not live without food. And not only that, but on our program, I'm limiting you and I'm being generous to maybe 500 calories a day. How are you going to survive? The issue is very simple. At six o'clock when you stop eating, any carbohydrates in your body will be used up immediately. Most things are based upon a 2,000 calorie a day diet. So the body is already short 1,500 calories a day. The carbohydrates which the body uses for energy are used up 
what's going to happen next. Your liver will turn to your stored fat, will convert stored fat to a sugar called glycogen, and 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you'll be living off the sugar that comes from the fat in your body. All well and good. It doesn't stop, but let's let go on from here. Now the key issue, and this is important, is we now move to survival. We would not be sitting here talking if it were easy. It's not easy because food in that comforting is incredibly powerful. And whatever the psychological demands there are in our lives, one of the things that we know is that if I don't eat, I'm not going to survive. So the issue of meeting that need becomes prominent in everything that we do. In the past few weeks, I've helped you understand that it's not your fault. But that doesn't change the fact that you want to lose weight. Now let's stop here for a moment because one of the things that I have been dealing with on the phone, in the office, emails, is the fact that since I made the commitment, I also committed myself to agreeing that I was going to change my behavior. And if you look around you, it's incredible the number of things that connect and all lead to getting comfort from food. Hi, Ivan. Now, our topic for today is, is the glass half full or half empty? The biggest problem I get from people is their impatience. It took them, I don't know how long to put on the weight that they put on. I'm not interested in their reason for wishing to lose weight. They have to acknowledge, meaning you have to acknowledge, that if that's what you want, then you're going to have to commit yourself to making a change. And the problem with making a change is that most people develop over their lives. And now for whatever the reason is, you've determined that you want to lose weight, that you have to change your behavior. So I want to introduce something that's really important. It's logic plus relief, a belief. Now, I want you to listen very closely because we're talking about that voice that you hear in the back of your head. And that voice 
will always talk to you and there's a balance involved. Now, any of you who have children or grandchildren or nephews or nieces, understand that the child comes to you and says, I want. Why does it want? It's irrelevant. It wants what it wants and it wants what it wants. And you know that the persistence of that wanting, and this is important, that persistence of wanting will not cease. It will go on and on and on with you in the middle. And that's pressure added to everything else, including the recognition that you want to lose weight. Excuse me. Now, logical belief, logical mind. I want to lose weight. I found a great program that will help me lose this. Belief. I've dieted for so many times that I can't count them. And here I am still losing weight. I'm a failure. I haven't been successful. I expect that this is going to happen again. And that's why I said to all of you, and I want you to think about this very, very carefully. I was on the Garden State Parkway today. Two accidents, both by people who want to get there yesterday. What was going on in their heads? I have no idea. But that conflict, I want to lose weight versus I want to get there. Belief that I won't magnified by the fact that they've failed so many times. And what happens, it impacted on me because I was on the Garden State Parkway for an extra hour today because some person couldn't resist the pressures that they were feeling regardless of what the impact is. How do we deal with it? Now, one of the things that I did was say, I want you to stop. I want you to recognize that you want both. You want that, and I'm going to call it a cheat. It's really not a cheat because you made a decision and that need is there. You want it. There's no question about it whatsoever because in your mind, if you have that cheat, it will comfort you. On the other side is this rationale that you've had and you have every right to say, I want to lose weight. But now you're between all of the choices that you have. Can I, should I, will I, how much will I have? Will I do it? Won't I do it? I can't do it. I shouldn't do it. And what I've said to you is, and I'm going to add this piece. I want you to verbalize. I want you to verbalize and say, right now, this 
instant. Which do I want more? The cheat, which I absolutely want. Do I want the cheat or do I want to lose weight? And that's why I developed the magic protocol. And I'm also saying you have to verbalize it. When something is in your head, it exists. When you verbalize it, you bring it into the real world and it's actualized. In this case, I chose peppermint Tic Tacs. Now, the reason I chose peppermint Tic Tacs is because when the peppermint flavor goes in your mouth, there's a a wake up. If you were just calm and whatever, the power of that peppermint will wake you up. You're the one who's putting the peppermint Tic Tacs in your mouth. You're the one who knows that you can't mix the taste of the Tic Tacs with the cheat. It'll taste terrible. And so you've blotted out all of the could I, should I, will I, can I, and you've taken back control. The Tic Tacs can't go into your mouth by themselves. And you've said, I want to lose weight and it's my top priority. If you verbalize it, then this all in the background goes away because it's erased immediately when you recognize the reason that you're putting the Tic Tacs in your mouth. So we're talking about actualization, we're talking about logic, and we're talking about your belief. If you don't change that belief, that belief is going to come true. Because like attracts like. I believe because I've failed so many times on diets before that even though logically based upon 25 year history, I know the program works, but not for me because I have failed so many times. Now, here's the question, and this is important. What I just said is accurate, but it makes you uncomfortable. Because once you acknowledge that, that whatever has been going on in your unconscious is the belief that you don't measure up because you failed all this time And the thought is, it may work for everybody else, but it's not going to work for me because there's that voice saying to me, I want. And that's the key. The voice is saying to you, you're going to fail. You know, early on, I said to you, that the infant at the moment it's born goes from 100% being taken care of to zero. It senses that. It's got to be scary as anything. I don't know how to interpret it, but the infant recognizes that survival is the prime ingredient. And it was given the mechanism. Any of you who've ever been involved with babies know 
The baby survives by screaming, getting your attention, so you can't ignore it until it gets a bit older and you begin to catch on that there's power in that screaming and the child most often is going to use it to manipulate. Now, with that knowledge and using it, you can get what it is you want. So stop for a moment and ask yourself before you put these Tic Tacs in your mouth, which do you want more? The comfort that you're going to get from that cheat or the feeling that you will have for whatever reasons you wish to lose weight. Which is more important to you? It's a choice, but it's a choice that's in your grasp. You're in control. You're conscious of what's happening. And instead of, and that's why I chose the Garden State Parkway, those behaviors that I see on the Garden State Parkway are magnified. Everybody's in a rush. There are some people, all they can think of is, I'm going as fast as I can. As I've told many people, I see all these driverless cars in Florida. Uh, these are older people whom you can't see because they're down in the car. And once they put on their directional, watch out of the way because once the directional is on, I'm going. The key here is the reason you've failed all of this time is because of the fact that you didn't put yourself first. You are the most important person in your life. And being the most important person in your life means that if you don't like the most important person in your life, then you're living with someone that you're not happy with. The instant you put those Tic Tacs in your mouth, what you said is, I really am the most important person in my life. And the most important person in my life wants to lose weight. I don't want to deal with should I, could I, will I, only a little bit, a lot. I didn't do it. I'll only do it this time. All of that goes away. And the only thing is left is I know if I put these Tic Tacs in my mouth, the combination of flavors will taste terrible and I will spit it out. I won't be happy about spitting it out but then I'm gonna recognize that I fulfilled what I really wanted. I wanna lose weight and I wanna feel good about myself in the process of losing weight. And therefore, rather than go through all of this argumentation, since I know exactly what's going to happen, the instant I put these Tic Tacs in my mouth, I get what I wanted. I take back control and I'm going to lose weight. There's something else that comes along as well. It's something I've talked about to many of you. When I do something that makes me proud of myself. 
I like myself better. It's nice to feel that I get up in the morning with someone whom I'm happy to get up with rather than someone I'm not happy to get up with because behaviorally I haven't succeeded. And the more I treat myself as important, the happier I am to be with me. And it begins to change your entire world. And this is what's important. You see, we don't think about it, but when we're not happy with the self that we get up with, we want to get away. We want to hide from it. I don't like being with someone whom I don't like being with. And I don't like being with because of all these thoughts that I have. But once I put those Tic Tacs in my mouth, I take back control and it feels better. And because it feels better, it makes it easier to do it the next time. I'm also meeting the needs of that voice in there, which says, I want. It wants comfort for whatever reason. I can give you the structure of uh, what's common among all obese people. Basically, the issue is food and comfort. They are obese because they use that feeling of comfort to override everything else. It's the one commonality. And the second commonality, as I told you, is imbalance. Now, let's move a step further. I don't know how long it took you to gain the amount of weight you put on. But I promised you that if you do the program properly, you're going to lose only fat and 15 pounds, and let's round it out, every month. I put the Tic Tac in my mouth. I didn't go off the program. I miss not having the treat, the comfort of it, but I like myself a little better because I treated myself the way I should be treated and I'm taking a step closer to my goal. And then I do it a second time and the result is the same. I'm unable to cheat because I chose not to cheat and I recognize I did it for me and I feel better about doing it for me because I'm getting to like the me that I am becoming. What most people don't understand and I want you to understand. It's going to impact on your entire life. Because the more you like you, the more differently you behave in the real world. There's a confidence there because you've said you're worth it. 
And whatever the story is of your early history is now being confronted by a person who says, I'm important enough for me to take care of me because it feels good. And the more it feels good, the more I want to continue it. And the more you want to continue it, and the more successful you are, the more you want to stay with it. There's a concept, there's a confidence that comes in that. And that confidence that you're worth it carries over into all of your interactions outside of. I cannot tell you how many stories I have been told by people who say to me, Dr. Schwartz, it's changed my behavior. I don't feel uncomfortable anymore. It's only food. It does comfort me. But me liking me is even more comforting. And I see it carries over into other areas of my life. The psychological issues here are wiped away. And as most of you know, I was a psychologist for over 50 years. And one of the things that I learned as a psychologist is that you have all of the answers. They're just hidden from you because of all the garbage that's there. No one hugged me, they didn't love me, they took this away from me, this happened, that happened. All of that is true. But it didn't make you unworthy. It didn't make you unlovable. It tested you because why did it happen to me? The reason it happened is irrelevant as far as the consequences are concerned because if you recognize it now, it loses its power. It cannot control you. And when it cannot control you, you begin to like you more and more. And when you like you more and more, there's a confidence that exudes, that gives you the weight loss, but also gives you the opportunity to take control of your life. The opportunity to think. And therefore, one of the things I want you to do is every single morning when you get up, I want you to ask yourself, what can I look forward to today that's going to make me like myself better? Because I realize if I like myself better, what I send out into the universe is going to attract how I feel. And the better I feel about me, the more that I like is going to be attracted. Now, I have some questions. I uh, will answer them. I'm going away on vacation and have a few questions. One, should I wear and use my beads when I'm away or wait to change them until I get back? The answer to the question depends on 
the timeline. First and foremost, how long are you going to be away? Do you intend to do the program? And just keep everything? Or do you want to go away and stay the same and not gain weight? Now, for the sake of discussion, I'm going to choose. I want to go away. I want to enjoy myself. But I don't want to gain weight and give away what I've been able to do up till now. It's very simple now. Think of having one meal a day. And choose whether you're going to have lunch or dinner. Your hours are going now from 12 noon to 8 p.m. If you have to stretch it, but conceptualize from 12 to 8. When I do it, I generally choose dinner because I'm busy during the day. And the most meaningful fruit and is Granny Smith apples. So I choose personally two Granny Smith apples. And up until about five o'clock, that's all I have. It sustains me. Then I go out to dinner. I said one meal a day, salad, vegetables, seven to eight ounces of protein. And if you wish a clean drink, not a pina colada, but a glass of wine, a gin and tonic, Doing that, your body will deal with it. You will not put on any weight, but you can have a real sense of vacation. Some people do this and also stick in a dairy day, a milk day, and that's perfectly fine, but you don't need to. It's part of the flex program. And what you're saying is, I deserve to go on vacation. I am in the process of losing weight. I don't want to give that away. I'm proud of myself because of the weight that I've lost till now. But I'm also permitted to live my life. 95 plus percent of people whom I speak to after they return, and by the way, restart always with dairy. 95 plus percent come back enthralled because they can look forward to the future and say, when I reach phase two, which is stabilization, I'm going to be able to eat everything that I like, but it's going to be how I eat it, not what do I eat. And once again, I recognize that that's making me the most important person in my life, and I deserve because the most important person in my life deserves. Anything special I need to do to get restarted? Will I go through detox all over again? There is nothing you need to do 
to go back on the program. I recommend that you start with two milk days because of the fact that you're starting the cleansing and detoxing program. The weight loss is automatically restarted and it'll make you feel good about yourself knowing that once again, you've chosen yourself. Oh, here's an interesting one. I've been using, and I'm going to put on my glasses because I think I read better when uh, I have them on. I've been using Tic Tacs, as you suggested, to stop myself from cheating. Is there a limit on how many I can use? I'm going through a whole package each day. Anything else besides Tic Tacs, I'm getting fed up with them. First and foremost, the number of Tic Tacs is unlimited. They're basically zero calories. And if you did it 40 or 50 times a day, it means that that voice is pressing on you and you're taking control and it's going to make you proud of yourself because you're doing it because you're doing it for yourself. But you're also saying, I realize it's going to help me understand I'm going to be able to keep my weight off because if I can do it now while on the program, I certainly can do it when I'm in control. Now, you can use breath mints. You can use different flavor Tic Tacs. You can use Dr. Chan's lollipop. You can use sugarless gum. The key is you have to give yourself something. Because what you're saying is to the voice that says, I want, I acknowledge you. You're part of me, but I'm the boss. I recognize you're part of me. And so I'm going to acknowledge you by giving you something. And it's going to make me feel good about me because I'm giving you something and I'm liking me better than I liked me a moment ago because I'm proving to me that I'm important enough in my own life to take care of me. Now, this is important. You must verbalize. If you're not talking to yourself out loud, it's not real. I've got a million thoughts in my head. They're thoughts. But until I verbalize, as for example, hey, Dr. S, how do you feel about using the Tic Tacs knowing? And the answer is, it feels good. When I verbalize it, I make it real. When I make it real, I can determine whether it's fantasy or whether it's history or whether it's what I deserve because that's what I choose. And that's why I like myself better and better each time. Remember then, the key here is to verbalize that you are the most important person in your life. Everything else emanates from that. The reason things happen to you are basically beyond your control. 
I hear it all the time. My parents were very strict and uh, my parents were very loose and uh, uh, all of those things impacted on my image of myself. Right now though, I've chosen to lose weight. I don't have to justify why I wanted to lose weight. I did. And now I have a mechanism to make me proud of myself because I'm going to achieve my goal. And when I achieve my goal, not only will I recognize it, but people around me will recognize it because what I send out into the universe is going to attract and my confidence is going to attract. The only thing that's something I can't answer is the timeline, but it's going to happen. Thank you for listening. Talk to you guys soon.